Join us this week on The Best of the West as we track down some of North America's biggest predators in the wilds of Alaska. Together with pro staff member Lat Durrance, we set our sights on predator management the Huskama way. This week on Best of the West, we are targeting bears. And my personal motivation, what's got me excited about this hunt, is for every bear we take out of the population, dozens of moose and caribou calves spring up. I have personally been in Alaska several times. It's one of my favorite places on earth. Originally, I began filming for Best of the West several years ago we filmed moose, doll sheep, bear, wolf. There are so many great memories coming back here. This is the first time I've ever been to Stephen Lake Lodge. Two years ago, Jim Sessions was up here at Stephen Lake Lodge, and he was blessed to take his first Alaskan Yukon moose. He's going down. He's down. Good job. He's down. Incredible animal. Absolutely incredible he did an animal. awesome job. Jim Sessions had a great time targeting moose. On this trip, we're going to be targeting bears, both black bear and grizzly bear. Wolves and bears can have a dramatic effect on big game herds. These areas we're hunting are so populated with predators that the season is open for grizzly bear all year long. Because predators can have such a dramatic effect, we must use the tool of management in order to keep the balance and have a healthy big game population. In the lower 48, grizzly bears are a protected species. However, the delisting of the grizzly bear is close at hand. As an apex predator with no hunting seasons, the population density continues to rise, forcing adolescent bears to go farther and farther to find new territory. Of course, there's more bear encounters. Allowing states to regulate grizzly bear populations through a limited quota hunting season is something that needs to happen special interest groups that continue to oppose the delisting of the grizzly bears are driven by emotion, not accurate information. This country is our backyard, and we have seen the population growing and growing with the densities becoming higher for many years. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Cryptech Camo, Hawkins Precision, Polestar Outdoors, 
Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. Stephan Lake Lodge is located in the Tawakitna Mountains, an hour flight from Anchorage, Alaska. Situated in prime moose, caribou, and doll sheep hunting areas, Stephan Lake Lodge provides high success hunts with the complete Alaskan experience. From day hunts out of the lodge to remote fly-in spike camps in the bush, the team at Stephan Lake will do whatever it takes to make your dream hunt a reality. So here at Stephan Lake Lodge, not only do we offer excellent hunting and fishing, but we're also uh, geared towards adventure. You can bring your entire family here, rent out the whole lodge, and go hiking, canoeing, blueberry picking. You can also, we've got these amazing spike cabins if you really want to experience the back country of Alaska, where there's no running water, no electricity, and see what it really feels like to be in the middle of nowhere. Or if you like the comforts of home, you can stay at our lodge, where we've got Wi-Fi, cable, running water, electricity, and you even have your own bathrooms. And part of my duties is to just make sure that nobody ever goes hungry. We have got um, homemade meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have appetizers out throughout the day, fresh baked goods such as cookies and pies, and we can cater to anybody's special needs. Coming to Alaska is like the trip of a lifetime, so please come to Stephan Lake Lodge and experience it for yourself. The first leg of our journey takes us to Black Bear Camp, surrounded by glacial rivers and lakes, very high game densities. This will be a great place to get our hunt off on a great start. I was excited because this is my first bear hunt and I might have the opportunity to pull the trigger for the very first time on my black bear. I have two great guides with me on this hunt, Wendell and Michael. We will be starting at one of the farthest distance bait stations away from camp. Upon arrival, Michael and Wendell definitely bait the station. Once situated in the stand, now it becomes a waiting game. You have to have patience and allow the bears to come into you. On our first setup, this station did not yield any bears. One bear came in and circled us behind and we never saw him again. So we decide to try our luck at one more station this evening. Once we were in the stand and everything settled down, within minutes, Terrence, the cameraman, is bumping my leg with his knee, pointing with his eyes, nobody wants to move, and we're seeing glimpses of a big black bear wanting to come into the bait. This was a mature bear. This bear was cautious. He ended up coming in and out over a half a dozen times, always waiting, watching, Ultimately, he circled behind us. We thought he was gone. And then, just like the first time, Terrence, the cameraman, is bumping me on my knee, pointing with his eyes. None of us dared to move. And finally, after an hour and a half of this game of cat and mouse, he came into full view.
This bear did a complete circle all the way around our stand. He would vanish, but then show up another 20, 30 minutes later. He wanted to come in on this bait. The next time he blew off, it was 30 minutes before we saw a glimpse of him again. He left then, it was 45 minutes, and we were starting to lose light and worried that the gig was up. And then, just like the first time, Terrence the cameraman is bumping me on my knee. None of us dared to move. Finally, I got a small window between some branches. Terrence said, wait, wait, let him clear the tree. At this point, I thought he was gonna run off again, and this was our last chance. I was on go, finger on the trigger, ready to go hot. Terrence said, wait, let him clear, let him clear. Finally, after an hour and a half of this game of cat and mouse, he came into full view. I placed the Huskamaw reticle right behind his ear. Bam! That was pretty intense. That, was intense. that bear has come around us three different times. He's been behind us, woofing. We're sitting here trying not to move. I was just talking to Terrence the whole time. You got him, you got him. I was trying to piece it between little windows, between leaves and twigs, just inch and a half spots right there. Woo! <sighs> Thanks, man. Yes, sir. That's fun stuff. <laughs> that's my first black bear. I've been on several of them, guided them, uh, packed them out. But that's the first one I've ever taken. Oh, he looked good, too. He does. He does, man. That's six foot plus black bear. And he yep. looks like he's got good hair. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what, he's smart. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Having a good time at Stephen Lake Lodge. Walking up oh, yeah. to my bear, emotions were running high. We were all excited, and I was particularly proud of the shot. Because this is an active bear station, we're gonna get this bear, we're gonna get him out of here, we're gonna go film him on the beach with some pretty scenery, but we've gotta get him out of this area. Returning to camp that evening, I couldn't help but think of my grandfather, my father, my uncle, all the hunts they had done before me, and that now, this is how they must have felt. It was a lot of fun and an emotional moment for me. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Cryptech Camo, Hawkins Precision, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com.
nice Alaskan black bear. I'm happy. That's my first black bear that I've ever tagged. We're dedicated to helping the herds here at Stephen Lake Lodge, herds of moose and caribou. There's so many bears in this area that it's a management task that we're working on. We've been hunting the last couple of days, putting some time in and some stands. There's some baits to bring these bears in so myself and the other hunters can get on them and get a good ethical shot. We're having a great time. This is part one of our Stephen Lake Lodge experience. We're gonna regroup. Plane's gonna come in, take us out of here tomorrow. And next, we're going after grizzly bear, spot and stalk. Stay with us. fly back to the big lodge and begin staging for our next phase. As we walked into the lodge, we were greeted by the staff with bacon wrapped shrimp, crab legs, and steaks. It was an incredible meal with a hot shower. Man, things just keep getting better. The next day, it was off to Grizzly Bear Camp. This was a spike camp in a very remote valley. Randy, our skilled pilot, put us in some incredible places. For this hunt, we are spot and stalk. From an excellent vantage point to view three different drainages that all came together, the bears were transitioning from berries on the mountain down to the salmon run on the river. Bear hunting is a whole bunch of hurry up and wait. 98% boredom and 2% wild excitement. Over the years, the Best of the West has received some amazing pictures of trophies taken in the field from proud Huskamaw Optic owners. We are so proud to see the tremendous success that Huskamaw Optics has brought to our customers. So in return, we've decided to incorporate a new segment into our future episodes. The Huskamaw Team Challenge will be a viewer submission segment from you, the viewer. Each week, we'll feature a hunt from one of our loyal customers and viewers. Each submission that airs on the Best of the West will receive a Huskamaw prize pack. And at the end of the year, our pro staff will sit down and pick a Huskamaw Team Challenge winner. The winner will be provided a Hunter Elite Rifle System and a hunt that will be filmed and featured on one of our shows. So get those Huskamaws and camcorders ready for some lights, camera, and action this year. Go to thebestofthewest.net for complete details on how to enter. Coming up on the Best of the West.
Now, of course, we're blessed with the finest gear in the industry. I have the new Best of the West rifle with carbon fiber Best of the West stock, carbon fiber barrel. It shoots less than half minute of angle. I have the new interlocking double stack turrets where I can dial out to more than 1400 yards. And a great tool is the new micro adjust head where I can stay with my eye in the scope, allowing me to make small, minute adjustments on my target. The harsh conditions in Alaska are some of the most brutal on earth. Good gear is not just required, you have to have it to survive and have a successful hunt. Cryptek rain gear was excellent in the field. hunting these bears here in Alaska. We're up on a plateau about 2,500, 3,000 foot above the lake and the river, Talkeetna River. We're sitting in a natural funnel area. We've got mountains all around us. We're on this plateau, tabletops, name of this particular area. And we've got funnels about a mile back to our uh, north here and just behind us right off the ridge here. We've got two different rivers coming together here and a third over here so we're literally this tabletop is surrounded by three different rivers they're natural funnels we're waiting on the bears to come to us you can glass literally for miles I can see four or five miles up that direction we're looking between a mile to two miles all the way around us and the stuff right right behind us is anywhere from 200 yards off to about 1100 to the other side over there. We're sitting in the right spot. Wendell is our seasoned bear guide. He keeps telling me to sit right here, wait. Of course, I see a bear up on the hill and I wanna make a run on it and get to it. But grizzly bears are the most unpredictable creatures, predator hunting in general. There's no rhyme or reason to what they're gonna do. You have no idea. They're just as liable to come down a hill slow and run right back up it and then 20 minutes later you see them playing rolling down it they they're so hard to pattern so we're sitting tight waiting on them to come to us that way they'll be in a naturally relaxed state for the shot try and get a bear here at Stephen Lake Lodge On the evening of our first day in Grizzly Camp, we spotted a bear a little over two miles away. We packed up our gear in a hurry and took off to make a mad dash to see if we could get there before dark. We were huffing and puffing, but we got there in time, and we stalked in on a nice bear. It was a nice bear with a beautiful blonde color phase, but she was a sow and she had two cubs with her. We were blessed to capture some of the best grizzly bear footage Best of the West has ever attained. It was really cool watching the sow and cubs stalking through the grass, flushing ptarmigan just like bird dogs. We hiked the two miles back to camp, not quite in as much of a hurry as we were on the way over. When we get back to camp, we are rewarded 
with a sighting of a lifetime. There's a wolverine less than 300 yards away and we film him for several minutes. Wolverine are tough, tough creatures and they're rarely seen. Day two, lots of glassing. Randomly, right in front of us, we spot a big boar grizzly bear. I'm packing. Same fire drill. Pack up our gear fast, strap it down, make a mad dash over there. It's about two miles. We cut the distance to within 400 yards of where we watched the bear walk down into the drainage. We cut the distance to within 400 yards of where we watched the bear walk down into the drainage. We set up, we look, we glass, no bear. How can a five to 800 pound animal disappear in brush that's no more than two foot tall with three sets of eyes glassing through excellent optics? Hurry up and wait, we sit there on the gun, ready to go for another five hours. Nothing, never to be seen again. Day three in spike camp, we spot another sow and cubs on the other side of the valley and we have a weather change. It's beginning to rain. With only two days left in the hunt, we decide to call the lodge and have the pilots come pick us up so we can go back to regroup. We returned to the lodge and were greeted by the staff again with hot hors d'oeuvres ready to go and they informed us that there had been several grizzly bear sightings, they had pictures of some of them, around the edge of the lake and actually swimming across the lake. We decided to spend the rest of our hunt hunting Stefan Lake. We hunted with several different techniques. At first, we were spot and stock, working our way around the lake, following trails, looking for open shooting lanes in the dense timber. We found lots of sign, but no shooter bear. The same weather that rolled in rained on us for the next day and a half, but our spirits were not dampened. On the last day, we decided to hunt from the boat and cover more ground around this large lake. There's so much wildlife in the lake. We had the beavers circling us like dolphin or porpoise out in the ocean, slapping their tail, just moving right along with us. It was entertaining and we were glassing the far shores and then we spotted a beaver dam. First thing I'm thinking, flat ground, elevated shooting position. Let's go check that out. 
we get to the beaver dam. And although not perfectly comfortable, it's five, six foot elevated above the lake, which gives you a vantage point to be able to shoot in 270 degree direction. Now it's the afternoon of the last day. We're approaching the last hours of our hunt. This is it, we're all in, we're committed to this spot. We bided our time and in the cut, just over 500 yards away, we saw a flash of a bear. I get on the gun, target acquired, Terrence is on him filming, telling me he's got him, we're rolling, you're good lat. It's a black bear with cubs. Motion started to go down at that point. This is it. Last day, last hour, are we gonna get a bear? And then a big cinnamon colored bear walks across the land, runs the black bears off and begins feeding up and down the lane. With filming light fading, the only shot that I had on this grizzly bear was when he picked his head up and looked directly at me. He's facing me the whole time. I never had a shot for the vitals. So I dialed my Husqvarna scope to one clip under 500 yards. I placed the crosshair right between his eyes with a one minute hold, squeeze the trigger. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Cryptech Camo, Hawkins Precision, Polestar Outdoors, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. Howdy folks, I'm Lat Durrance. Today on Best of the West, the shooting tip is going to be about pre-firing checklist. What we're looking for in a shooting position is a spot that's relatively flat. We would never want to limit ourselves or box ourselves in so we couldn't turn and follow the animal left or right, up or down. We wouldn't be, want to be between two rocks or two trees if we didn't have to be because that would limit our options. We're looking for clear shooting lanes. Now we will set up our tools to help us make the shot. Once we've placed our front and rear rest, we need to make sure that we have a clear line of sight between our shooting position and the target. I like to set my front rest up where my reticle, my crosshairs, are approximately two minutes above the target. This way, the last thing I do when I come into my rifle with my cheek weld and my grip five to eight pounds into my shoulder, with that pressure, the barrel will naturally go down. The next step, is getting a shoot to verified range. Once we have our range, I want to flip out my level, dial my Huskama RFBC turret to the exact yardage. For today's purposes, that's 700 yards. With the Huskama patented windage enabled turret, we simply look above our yardage number and look at the small number which denotes our wind hold for a 10 mile per hour wind. At 700 yards, my wind hold with this rifle is three minutes of angle. When using the wind meter, point it directly at the target. You are only concerned with the true value of your crosswind, three o'clock to nine o'clock, nine o'clock to three o'clock. Mirage is a great wind indicator. Another wind indicator, Airborne material, snow, rain, bloom, insects. These are not as common, but they all work. Your wind meter is with you at all times and you should certainly use that. After our final wind check, which is really picked up, now we're averaging a 10 mile per hour wind. 
I get down on target and dry fire. I always dry fire at least three times before I go hot with a live round. This promotes muscle memory, it helps relax you and gets you in a rhythm to where you can make a perfect shot. Make sure that the chamber's empty and I like to have my magazine loaded. That way, when I'm done with my dry fire process, I simply stay on target, work the bolt, so I'm ready to go live. Once I know my gun is safe, I acquire the target, proper five to eight pounds of pressure into the shoulder, make sure my level is in the middle with the bubble, and squeeze. That looked great. The reticle did not move. I followed through for two to three seconds afterward. I would have made that shot. If my reticle stays on target, then that's where the bullet would have gone. Once we feel good with our dry fire process, we work the bolt, staying on target. For my final free fire checklist, I make sure my sling stud's not touching my front rest. My bubble is level. I'm holding three minutes into the wind. Right wind, main crosshair right. And I squeeze just like my previous dry fires. I stay on target with follow through for at least a two count and I observe my bullet's impact on the target. I prepare for a follow up shot while I'm maintaining target acquisition, watching my animal. Once the animal is expired and is on the ground, woohoo! Now I need to return my turret back to zero, close my bubble level, return my power magnification down to low, make the gun safe, drop the firing pin on an empty chamber. Remember, dry firing supports muscle memory and long range shooting means bench rest. Any other position should be bench rest like, front and rear rest that are solid. I'm Lat Durrance. Thanks for watching Best of the West. We'll see you next time. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Cryptech Camo, Hawkins Precision, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. For information about hunting at Stephen Lake Lodge, please visit online at www.stephenlakealaska.com or to book a hunt, please call John Madsen at 907-331-8045. For more information about the products and gear used in today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. The only shot that I had on this grizzly bear was when he picked his head up and looked directly at me. I placed the crosshair right between his eyes with a one minute hold, squeezed the trigger. Big bear down. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Wait, that is buddy. intense. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Thank you so much. Woo! Oh! oh. By the time we got over to the bear, it was dark. We get out, rush to the spot, and the grizzly bear's not there. Well, at that point, motions change. It's dark, and we possibly have a wounded bear. We get back in the boat, go back to the lodge. I spent a sleepless night. We go back the next morning, we recover the bear. He's about 40 yards away, he's rolled down the hill. Mission accomplished. I was one happy hunter. We had completed our mission, fulfilling 
the management responsibilities by taking two predators out of the game population. I want to give special thanks to John Madsen at Stephen Lake Lodge for truly creating an unbelievable experience. Whoa! Oh my gosh! That is intense! I also want to thank the guides and all the staff for all the support you gave us and all that excellent food. I'm definitely coming back to Stephen Lake Lodge. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Best of the West, your long range hunting authority. Next week on the Best of the West. We got a pile of antelope out there. It's a nice gentleman's hunt. In my physical condition, it's about all I can do anymore. The first surgery, they said I'd be bungee jumping in six weeks. In six weeks, I couldn't walk. I've had three surgeries, and uh, every one of them, it got worse. I just have to accept my condition. <laughs>